For the last six years, I've played racquetball. However, pickleball is really nothing like racquetball. In fact, it's more comparable to a sport, say, tennis. You see, tennis is played on a court with a net much like pickleball is, except in pickleball, the balls are different. A lot different. The balls are more comparable to that of a wiffle ball. And also in pickleball, they use paddles, and although paddles vary with face shape, material, and design, the paddle's more compact and sleeker and smaller than the traditional stringed, open-faced tennis racket would be. Additionally, a tennis court is nearly double that of what a pickleball court is. And a pickleball court has an area on both sides of the net called the kitchen, which serves as a no-volley zone. Lastly, the pickleball net sits 10 inches lower than that of the traditional tennis net. My first experience playing was when a couple of my friends invited me down to play at some local courts near my house. So, I got in my car and drove down to the courts, which were only roughly six miles from my house. These are the three to pair pickleball courts in to pair park, and they sit adjacent to the nearby tennis courts that have been long standing. However, these pickleball courts are fairly new. In fact, in 2018, the park received a $1.6 million grant for the renovation project to replace the existing deteriorated asphalt tennis courts, add pickleball courts, and add parking as well as restrooms. What's important about the site is the courts are post tension pickleball courts and they're standalone, which is unique for the St. Louis area. But back to the story, when George said, Let's play pickleball. We got right into it. We picked up a ball, headed to the baseline, and started the rally with a serve. Watch it, watch it, be careful. And it's moments like this where I just fell in love with pickleball. And I think the reason why I love pickleball and fell in love with the sport so fast is really rudimentary and simple. I mean, it's really a game for everybody, and there's no one who can't play your grandma, your grandpa, your cousin. It's everybody. Whether you're big, small, tall, athletic, or maybe just plain stupid, if you can pick up a ball, serve it, and keep the rally going, then really there is no limit to who can and who can't play pickleball. Trash ass. <laughs>
some of that was like, okay, how can how can I build courts? What what can I do to become, um, you know, uh, somebody that's going to create change and influence some, you know, politicians or leaders or something like that? I have uh, the Tillis Park neighborhood uh, courts that are, are right two blocks from my house, you know, and they were dilapidated tennis courts. Yeah, you know that only get fixed maybe once every. 10 to 15 years in the park and whenever you know busted like that nobody's using them and i was like i'd love to have pickleball here so chipping went out and created a presentation that he gave to the board of tillis park neighborhood association and parks and recreation he said what pickleball was what the rules are how fast the sport has grown and listed some examples of other courts such as in illinois that were profitable and doing well he explained that if he could get people to play then it would be very profitable for the city and others to invest in this, and it could be a worldwide phenomenon. He also showed the existing courts that were used for tennis that no one was playing on. He said that if we, they could revamp and revitalize these courts, that they could see a rampant boost in the pickleball scene in St. Louis. The tennis courts in Tillis Park said tennis only. Ironically, nobody used tennis courts because the nets were ripped, they were torn and utterly unusable, there were large cracks in the ground spanning as long as a court and as wide as four inches with weeds growing through them. Nobody could play in the court and nobody did. However, Chapin wanted to play pickleball there. And, you know, I sh took pictures of the big cracks in the court and said, you know, yeah. ultimately give me, you know, time. I'll, I'll, I'll go fix the courts myself. And that's exactly what Chapin did. Starting May 15th, him and his neighbor, Tim Williams, who was an electrician, started to dig up the loose dirt from the holes and fill them so that it'd be safe to use. And they also painted lines on the courts to represent the lines of the pickleball courts. Although it was rainy, sloggy, and gross every single day, they got it done by May 26th. And that was the first day they got to start playing. And now on the courts that tennis only became pickleball only. Chapin put out flyers saying, no experience needed, come play, pickleball free. And that's exactly what people did. People came by the dozens to see what all this new fad was about pickleball, and Chapin was excited to teach them exactly what it was and what it meant to play the game. It was obvious at first that people fell in love with it. 40, and every mm -hmm. time we would chalk lines and, and, and use our own portable nets for, for, for creating courts. And so if I, could, if I could create the community of people locally, I convinced the Neighborhood Association that this was a real thing. So literally, you know, we dug the, the weeds and the dirt and, and put in rock and just painted courts and got them to a point where they were playable. And I could set up four nets and I, you know, connected myself with a paddle company that were donated paddles. I bought a bunch of used paddles on e eBay and, 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 and every week I would have like, you know, eight people and nine people and 12 people and 16 people and 22 people. And so it takes pictures and I would text them to all the decision makers and I yep, got in front of Greg Hayes, the parks and rec director. Um, and, and ultimately he bought into what was happening and had heard about it. And then finally at the end of that summer uh, of 15, you know, we had the meeting again with the alderman who was, who basically owned the, the budget for the parks and rec and and they decided or was able to convince them to redo the courts uh, which then took a year of planning and pro I actually had to hire my own architect to do the designs because we were trying to debate whether or not they could do four courts or six courts i wanted eight courts so we negotiated and settled on six courts and keep one tennis court so and because of taping meeting with the board and the aldermen they finally approved the courts construction in tillis park and within a year's time, the courts were done and ready to be played on. But now people know it is the pickleball tennis park, and there's more people playing pickleball at that park because of pickleball than, or people come to that park because of pickleball than any any time before. Um, Roundelet is loaded with people every week, you know, and stuff like that. And so it's it's it is a game that that has brought people together. I'm excited about the Major League Pickleball team. I'm excited about these new venues coming online. Um, MPC is you know the already the largest indoor 
facility in the country and they they've announced a second location nobody knows where that's going to be but to understand the history of pickleball in st louis is to understand the nature of the snowball effect that came with the construction of the courts at tillis park after it wasn't long chapin said until there were seven courts within five miles of his house his next project directly after the tillis park courts creation was tower grove courts um I wanted to show that we were a real entity. I wanted to show that we were more than just a, a fad. In a 2016 project with $750,000 at Tower Grove Park, the Tower Grove Park Foundation was convinced by Chapin not to build out all new tennis courts. Instead, the, the creation project of these courts was now to include Park was a pivotal win for Chapin as a part of the plan to bring pickleball to St. Louis because it garnered the attention of Dave Weinbach, a player out of Madison, Wisconsin, who was the top player at the time. Shortly after this victory, many other parks started adding courts to their park, such as Wilmore Park, Benton Park, and soon to be Lindenwood Park. Because of Chapin's early work, there now exist over 125 individual courts in the greater St. Louis area. And the real magnum opus of Chapin's work, and when everything really came together, was the Forest Park Regional Tournament. There was over 750 people from 30 different states. You know, 10 years ago, I, 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 I mean, I'm, I, I didn't even hear a pickleball. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, to where things are in 2023 today and, um, you know, feeling like I've been able to have some significance and impact most notably, you can see Chapin's impact at Dick's Sporting Goods. It was only four or five years ago that if you were to walk into Dick's Sporting Goods and ask the employee for, say, pickleball paddles, pickleball balls, or pickleball nets, that they would look at you like you're crazy. So, last week, I decided to go to Dick's Sporting Goods and see what pickleball supplies they have in store now. And I took countless amount of photos. I mean, they had graphite paddles, composite paddles, wooden paddles, polymer core paddles, Nomex paddles, lightweight paddles, heavyweight paddles, midweight paddles, cheap paddles, expensive paddles, whatever you wanted, they definitely had. What you need to understand is just how inclusive the sport actually is. Regardless of size, gender, age, mobility, you can really play pickleball at any skill level. And it's because of this reason that the community is so strong and that it's such a socially inclusive sport. It's, it's just that there's so many more people that can play pickleball. And so, yeah, I've never seen a game, Adrian, personally, that has been not just fun and interactive and easy to learn and play, but you can play it on so many different levels. Uh, you know, there's a huge number, 93 or 5% of people that play are just socially doing it. And like my parents, they just find not just the exercise, but the thrill of the social engagement. It it, it lifts people up, their spirits, their uh, wanting to make connection. And this is a, the ultimate family game and connections game and friends game and network game. You know, how many degrees are you separated from Kevin Bacon? It's like, how many degrees are we separated from each other? you know, amongst the pickleball community. You gave me a, a funny story yourself right there, you know. We're, we're all interconnected so well here in St. Louis, and this is the perfect area to, to have that kind of a game to pull people together. When I go to Tillis Park on a Friday or, or five o'clock on a weeknight, I can't get a court because they're are loaded with 20-sums and you know six or seven of them are on a court so four of them are playing and four of them are hanging out or three of them and they're playing music and having a few beverages and they don't really care about the rules or how to play the game the right way they're just having the best time in the world and you know and i look at that and i just pinch myself i'm like i'm i can't believe you know all the efforts way back when to get this you know kicked off is, you know, where everybody's finding this massive engagement now. Let's pause here for a moment. In case you missed it, what I want you to reflect upon is what seems to be disbelief here. It seems that Mike is saying that he cannot believe his early work helping create the courts at Tillis Park has brought such a blessing of community and engagement. 
And although I think that's true, what I think he's getting at is something deeper here. In our interview, one of the questions I asked him was, who was your biggest help in creating the courts at Tillis Park? And what I want you to do is listen to his response carefully. You know, I, I mean, at the time, uh, my ex-wife and her maiden name now is Donna Hewer, um Chapin. She had, is her last name when at that time. I mean, we we were a team. We 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 did a lot of the work together and training and. Uh, I think I, I had more of the passion to, to build the courts and she had more of the passion to, to want to go play. And, and um, so, yeah, I would, you know, we, we definitely coordinated a lot of efforts together. I, I, I don't think I'll ever stop teaching. I don't think I ever stop trying to grow and, and be, you know, it's just really good people in pickleball and a lot of games and sports, but you know, there's, I've never met so many wonderful friends and relations. And like I said, 10 years ago, I wouldn't even, I loved my job working with students and, you know, I was playing golf and doing little things with tennis and, and whatnot, but to have the impact um, and be able to have this thing happen positively in my life where I went through some, you know, negativity with the divorce and other things, um, it's, it's been a blessing for sure you know I, I think again I, I think it's a sure love of playing a game yes it's a game so there is going to be a winner and a loser and yet when you lose you don't always feel like a loser unless you allow that to happen you know people tap paddles at the end they they smile, they laugh at themselves, they laugh with each other, they want to mix up and, 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 and do that. And even in, in, in tournaments, uh, the camaraderie that people have, whether they, you know, place on a medal stand or just, you know, didn't win a game, there's, you know, usually what I love, the, the friendly nature to it. Now, you know, things have ultimately changed a lot and everywhere because it was in people's driveways and cul-de-sacs and they could make courts and just had a, 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 a well of a time so this game is transformative it brings families together it it, it brings marriages together it brings relationships of uh, you know or I mean um, you know diagnosis of, of depression and, and, and uh, you know challenges of, of, of broken relationships and brings people together i've never seen any other game do that and and when i started getting into it it's like yeah i want to i want to play a game that i can or be involved with a sport that i can play in my 60s 70s and you know hopefully 80s but i never realized how cool this game really is because of what it's doing all over the all over the world now and, and it's 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 something else i thought this is this is this is why people want to come to St. Louis and what we're about here.